Good morning. Welcome to DeSoto United Methodist Church on this lovely 2024 Sunday. Um, we're delighted that you're here. Just to share with you a few announcements, we're kind of getting back into the swing of things this week. So um, Bible Explorers are this evening from five to 4 to 5.30, youth groups from 4 to 5.30, um, and there'll be a Christmas decoration takedown on Wednesday um, and services at Hillside um, at 1.30 on Wednesday. And then if you want to mark your calendars for a fun family event at 3 o'clock on February 3rd, Pastor. Thank you, Tammy. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm so glad you came to worship God on the first Sunday of the year. Again, yeah. <laughs> you made the best decision ever. So please turn to your neighbor. By the way, I'm, my name is Pastor Young Jae Kim. <laughs> please turn to your neighbor. Say Happy New Year and then hi and then nice to meet you and then good to see you. Welcome back. <laughs> Please stand as you're able and join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And please remain standing and uh, for our opening hymn, Shout to the Lord. And it's also printed in your bulletin. We'll sing it twice, okay? Let us try. <laughs> My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let Never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mind. Tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord of the earth, let us sing, power and majesty, praise to the King, mountains bow down and the sea. At the 
sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Amen. Please be seated. You did a great job. Yeah. Now I'd like to invite you to pray for the peace in Israel and Gaza. As you know, it is getting serious and then worse. So we need to pray um, for that place, that land, and then no more expansion of the war. And please pray for those in our prayer list and the bulletin. And then also, please pray for our spiritual growth in 2024. This year is not, you know, for celebration only. You know, we need to grow spiritually and come closer to God. And we have to take this new year as an opportunity and a gift. Another, you know, He allowed us to have this year. So we have to use our time and energy according to His will. So please pray for your own spirituality and in our church, as a church, our spiritual journey. Please pray for us. So Tammy will lead us to pray. Please join together in the prayer of the people. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, thank you for allowing us a new year. We don't take it for granted. We know it's a gift from you and another opportunity for us to grow and come closer to you. Bless each one of us so we can find you in our lives. Bless our children and grandchildren so they can become strong disciples of Jesus Christ, walking with us in our pilgrim journey together and make a difference for the community and the world reflecting your light. Lord, so many people have suffered from the war and conflict in Gaza and Israel. Please stop the violence as soon as possible and save lives. Please give them the good news of peace. We also pray for those whose names are on our prayer list, those in our thoughts, and those we are not aware of. Heal those suffering from illness and pain physically, mentally, and emotionally. Heal those fighting in the hospital bed. Strengthen those recovering. Allow endurance to those going through a lot of pain right now. Bring reconciliation to the families in conflict. Give hope in you to those in despair. Provide everything they need for those in need. Remind the lonely of your loving presence. Bring the lost back to you. Shine your light to those in darkness of addiction, depression, and anxiety. As our community is growing, we need your protection and guidance. Give our city officials wisdom and fear of God. Make our church better disciples and use us and equip us for your glory. Send us to our family, friends, and neighbors as your hands and feet for changing lives, transforming the communities by reaching, welcoming, and engaging. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, the light of the world who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us praise our Lord through hymn number 158. We will sing verse 1. Come, Christians, join to sing. Alleluia, amen. Loud praise to Christ our King. Alleluia. the children forward for the children's moment this morning. Good morning, friends. It's good to see you. Are you guys ready to go back to school tomorrow? <laughs> yes, no. I only, I missed my friends whenever I wasn't, whenever school was out, so... I know, but it's, but it's also nice to have time to just hang out at home, too. So, and it's kind of a mixture, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah. And who knows what's going to happen with the weather? You guys might get to have another day at home this week. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the snow has started to melt. That It is going to snow again. Okay, so... Um, Today, our scripture in worship is from the Gospel of John, which is in the, does anybody remember which testament it's in, the Old Testament or the New Testament? The Gospel of John is in the New Testament, yeah, and in the Gospel of John, the person who wrote this gospel wants us to know who Jesus is. He wants us to know, he says, the writer even tells us, he puts this in the gospel, he says, I've written this good news so that we can believe that Jesus is God's son. And so throughout the whole gospel, we hear all of these names for Jesus. We hear that Jesus is the good shepherd. Pastor Kim said one of the ones that we hear in the gospel of John already, he said, Jesus is the light of the world. We hear that in the Gospel of John. We hear that Jesus is the bread of life. And there's another name that is used for Jesus in our scripture today. So let's listen. I want you to listen as Mrs. McKenzie reads it and see if you can pick it out. Okay, let's listen. This morning's scripture does come from the book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look! the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Did you hear it? What, did, what was the name for Jesus that we heard in our scripture? I'm going to read it again. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes... The Lamb of God. Yes, good, good job. And so this name for Jesus, we could think of it maybe as a symbol for Jesus or a nickname for Jesus. This is connecting Jesus to the Passover meal and to the, and to the Last Supper. Now, there's a lot of stuff that we have to learn to understand that connection. But for now, you are learning that this name for Jesus, Lamb of God, this is another way we recognize Jesus. And John, that was John the Baptist who said that. John the Baptist baptized Jesus. And so this morning, instead of 
an echo prayer, Pastor Kim is going to offer a blessing to you this morning, kind of like you, we get blessed at baptism, but he's going to offer a blessing okay, to let you. us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for these precious young children. They are the future of the church and the world, and we are so blessed with these children, Lord. Please help us learn from them, and then please give them wisdom and strength and health, and bless their families as they are growing up. Lord, please make them good disciples of Jesus Christ as they are following Jesus. And I ask you to bless Aviva, bless Emery, bless Rebecca, bless Oliver, bless Henry, bless Ewan, bless Kaylee, bless Linda, bless Henry, bless Grayson, bless Kaya, bless Drew and Hannah, and bless all the children in our church. Please help us support each one of them spiritually, emotionally, and mentally, and please surround them with your Holy Spirit. As they are going through this year, this new year, 2024, please walk with them. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, Shirley Coker, welcome back, by the way. <laughs> we needed you a lot, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and she will dedicate the special music, Christmas medley, uh, on behalf of all of us. Have you tried any clothes made of camel's hair before? I googled it if there is such a thing. And see, looks nice, right? <laughs> yeah. This is discounted price is $5,594. <laughs> and before discount it was 7,795. 
very expensive, right? <laughs> yeah, it is handmade uh, camel hair top coat. Yeah, it, it's worth a, a used car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, John the, which as we know, John the Baptist wore the clothes with, made of uh, camel's hair. And I don't think it sh his clothing was this fancy. For the first sermon series this year, we will share about the people who met Jesus. Today, uh, we will see how the life of John, John the Baptist, who wore not this coat, but the uh, clothing of hair of camel um, happened after he met Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty God, your word, grace, and love is perfect, but your servant is not. So inspire me with the Holy Spirit and open our hearts and minds. Be with us here and now so that we can learn and listen to your voice and your will all together. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Each gospel, we have four gospels as you know, and each gospel starts differently. And Mark's gospel starts like this. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. So immediately, this gospel begins with John the Baptist's story. And John's appearance was introduced in Matthew's gospel like this. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. Yummy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He is considered a part of an uh, Essen, um, one of the sects in ancient Judea at the time, then who were like, they were like a monk in the wilderness. And then they uh, had their own religious um, behavior and habits. And then he was considered one of them. And John preached in the wilderness of Judea like this, repent or the kingdom of heaven has come near. Time is near, you better behave. That's his message, basically. And then he says, The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So people were threatened, and then they were afraid of judgment, and then they came to Jesus. I mean, to, to John the Baptist. People went out to him from Jerusalem and then all Judea, and the whole reason of Jordan confessing their sins and they were baptized by John. They asked him, what should we do now? And then John gave them instructions what, how to live. So many people were baptized and then followed him. And that crowd was, seems to be very, so big. Because the, uh, the first century Jewish historian Joseph, Josephus wrote he, uh, about John the Baptist like this. Now many people came in crowds to him, for they were greatly moved by his words. Herod, who feared that the great influence John had over the mess, uh, messes, um, might put them into his power and enable him to raise a rebellion, for they seemed ready to do anything he, he should advise. Thought it best to put him to death. So that's according to the uh, historian uh, in the first century. So his influence was great in, in, at the time. So people actually thought he might be the long-awaited Messiah. Right? In, but... He said he's not the Messiah, and he actually said, uh, the Bible says he is the witness. He was not the Messiah, but he was the witness. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. 
He said, "I am the voice. I'm only the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord." Quoting Isaiah the prophet, and he introduced the Jesus. John saw Jesus, and then he, he, you know, before he even he met Jesus, he introduced Jesus like this: "I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance." But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His his winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor, and gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Again, he was introducing Jesus as a You know, Lord of Judgment, mostly and mainly. When he saw Jesus coming toward him, and he said, "Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world." He introduced Jesus as the Lamb of God, and then they knew what the Lamb of God meant. And it was related to Passover. Now John was a witness. Who introduced Jesus to people? Are we? Are we? Are we witnesses that introducing、um, Jesus to people? Witnesses witness with what they actually saw. You know, they don't say, "I heard of it. Somebody said it." You know, like that. They actually saw something happen. And they experienced it, and then they can become witness. So we have to meet Jesus in person. We have to experience Jesus, His goodness, His mercy, His grace. We have to experience it first. Otherwise, we are just delivering knowledge. We cannot become witness. You know the Bible, right? You know a lot of the Bible Bible stories, right? But we are not storytellers. But we should be witnesses. In our lives, we should experience Jesus. In that way, we can become witnesses. Now he was the witness. He actually saw, and then he was inspired by the Holy Spirit, and then he witnessed who Jesus was. Now Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John, but John tried to deter him because he recognized Jesus, the Messiah is coming, and then he was like, a, maybe it was more like a meeting、um, celebrity in person. For teenagers, if they meet, like for example Taylor Swift in person, you know, or for the sports fans meeting、uh, Mahomes in in person and having dinner together. It's going to be overwhelming joy, right? But for the John the Baptist, it was more than that. He was so glad to meet the Messiah in person. Now, Jesus is saying, "Now baptize me," and he was like, "What? I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me?" That was his response. Then Jesus replied, "Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness." Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized and came out of the water, the Scripture says, "Heaven was opened, and the Spirit of God descended like a dove and alighted on him." Then a voice from heaven said, "This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased." That was amazing experience, right? And experience that. Then, by the way, as you know, baptism is related to forgiveness, repentance. You know that. So Jesus, the Son of God, are who was sinless. Need to be baptized, need forgiveness. What do you think? He didn't need it at all. But 
Jesus showed how we are supposed to do as an example. And then he showed his humble heart. And it was his official beginning of his public ministry. That he showed the way. And then publicly, God presented Jesus. Ta-da! To the public. Yeah. But it was not John's first encounter with Jesus, actually. It was about you know, 30 years ago um, when Gabriel, the angel, announced Mary that she would have a um, baby and she, she's going to give, give birth to the Son of God. She was overwhelmed, but he, she accepted. And then the, the angel reassured her that, don't worry about it, your relative Elizabeth in her old age, she will have a baby as well. And then she, Mary, immediately went to uh, visit Elizabeth. Maybe she needed uh, some support how she can handle that uh, situation. Can you imagine a teenage girl announced by the angel that you're going to have a son of God? It was an overwhelming moment. So she went to Elizabeth, and then Elizabeth welcomed her, saying, You are blessed. You should know you are blessed. The scripture says, When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaping in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then in a loud voice, Elizabeth exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I, the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Mothers, may, may, may I ask you, have you experienced your child was leaping in your womb or punching or kicking? Yeah, yeah I felt um, my girls were pushing, but... Not leaping at all. I can't imagine the baby is leaping in the womb. Yeah. John the Baptist was overjoyed, filled with the Holy Spirit, even though he was not born yet. And that was his first encounter of him meeting Jesus in the womb of Mary. Yeah, that's cute, right? <laughs> when John the Baptist met Jesus for the first time as a baby, in his mother's womb, he was overjoyed. That joy was caused by the Holy Spirit. And then that might be the first reaction when we meet Jesus in person. As I shared, we will share about the people who met Jesus. And if we really meet Jesus in person, experience Jesus in his grace and his love, joy will be the first expression, first emotion that we can feel. Do you have joy? Have you had joy, that joy of salvation, when you meet Jesus? Everything looks beautiful. Everybody looks beautiful when you met Jesus. And because you see Jesus in every person's face. That was a joy. If you didn't have that experience, we have to pray about it. Yeah, that might be the first reaction when we meet Jesus in person, believing and accepting his abounding love and grace for us. And one of us told me that she believed in God, but he, she didn't believe in Jesus. But when she was very sick, she met Jesus, and then she embraced Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. And at the time, I could feel her joy from her face. John was overjoyed when he met Jesus. But his joy did not last forever. And he was captured by Herod, and it was imprisoned because Herod didn't like him. Um, he mentioned about, he pointed his behavior, Herod's behavior, and then you did wrong. You, know, you took 
uh, your brother's wife, that's the wrong thing. And then Herod didn't like it, and then he imprisoned John in the prison. And in prison, John heard about Jesus through his disciples. John had his own disciples. And they told, reported him what, what's happening in the world. And, of course, he was curious about Jesus. So they reported to him what, happened, what is happening. And then it seems John the Baptist was not sure if Jesus was the Messiah. Huh. He doubted. Is he really Messiah? And then he sent his disciples to Jesus to ask questions. And they asked him, you know, uh, in his ministry, John described Jesus as, as if he is coming to judge and punish people, like he also, um, like this. Uh, his winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into a barn, and but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So, he sent his disciples and asked this question. Are you the one who is coming or should we look for someone else? Are you really the Messiah? I thought you are, but you seem to be not what I expected. See? If Jesus was not the Messiah, John would have been frustrated a lot. He waited and waited and he proclaimed, the Messiah is coming. I'm just preparing for his way, making things straight for, for him. And then when he met Jesus, here he is, the Lamb of God. He's the Messiah that I proclaim to you. Now, if he is, he's not, he might be so sad because what he heard was different from what he thought. Throughout church history, many mistakes were made by the narrow-minded Christians. Now, if we are you know, confined with our own agenda and our own perspective only and then not open humbly, you know, we will misunderstand about God. Many Christians think they know about God. But sometimes they are not. If they think they know about God perfectly, trust me, they're wrong. They don't know about God at all. God is different. God can be different from what we knew. That's why we have to learn every day more and more about God. We have to experience it. We have to learn about Him through the Word through sort of our prayer, through our experience, we have to learn about God. We have to be, we have to humble, we have to humbly open our minds to learn more about God. And Jesus replied to John's disciples, go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear, the dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Even though things are not going what we thought, planned, or scheduled, God is still working. We gotta trust Him. Even though things are going not we planned as, as we planned. We have to trust Him. How do you know if it is God's work or God's will? See the fruit. If that is, there is good things happening according to God's eyes, not our own eyes. You know, through God's lenses, you know, if good things are happening, we can see, we can tell God is working. When we, uh, you know, we can be confused if we are going in the right direction. 
Yeah. We can doubt if we are going to the right direction. Then see if good things are happening before God's eyes and trust, even though it is not going what we have planned. And sometimes even though we are going to the right, in the right direct direction, our close friends or family members or things happening in our lives can confuse us or discourage us. That hurts more, you know. If, you, if your enemies are bothering you, that's okay. But your family members or your close friends are, you know, hurting you, that's more hurtful. Then look up your eyes and then see what God is doing. If, you're, if you see good things happening in God's eyes, keep doing what you are doing even though the world or people around you are trying to frustrate you. Keep doing it. If you see good things are happening in God's eyes. Then I didn't, I didn't see that John sent his disciples again to Jesus. Actually, he was killed by Herod soon. But I believe he realized and believed that Jesus was the Messiah after he got the report from his disciples immediately. Yes, that's right. It's about grace, he learned, I believe. I believe he learned about amazing grace of, of the Messiah and abounding love of God through the report. After John the Baptist met Jesus, he was overjoyed and became witness. But there was a time when he was confused and doubted. It could be happening to us as well. But let us humble before God and to learn more about his loving grace. And let us intentionally observe what God is doing in our lives. In our church, in our community. And I pray that we become stronger witness of Jesus Christ. Happy New Year. Okay. Please open your um, United Methodist hymnal, page 12. Christ our Lord invites to his table of love them who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be a Indian church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray in silence for a moment. Now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's amazing love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, by his grace and through your faith, you're forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and on the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, 
broke the bread and gave to disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave to disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often you to drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these are mighty, these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these, give the bread and wine. Make them before us the body and blood of Christ, that we may before the world the body of Christ, the redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet altogether. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's table is open to everybody, no exception. So please come forward. Yeah. Let us give our gift to the Lord. Stand as you are able and face the cross as we sing the doxology. Holy God, with humility, we offer our tithes and offerings to you. May they be used to faithfully serve the mission and ministry of your holy church. Bless those who offered to you with gratitude. Fill their needs, watch over their path every day. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. <laughs> so Hannah, is, are you, is she the only one? or? Yeah, yeah, Aviva as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any birthday boys or girls? Diane? Okay, Grayson, please stand up. Okay, and anybody else? Nobody else? Okay, let go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Grayson. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Now, let us uh, praise our Lord through hymn number uh, 156. We're going to sing verse 1. I love to tell the story. Would you please stand? <laughs> I love to tell the story. Nothing else can be new. I love to 
tell the story, twill be my theme in glory to tell the long old story of Jesus and his love. Let us pray. As you are going forth holding this amazing good news of Jesus Christ, may he meet you in person every day, inspire you and be with you and equip you and be with you all forever and ever. Amen. Okay, Happy New Year again.